Okay, so I lied. Um, I really wanted that Hobgoblin, and uh, basically, yeah. So first pack I open, I got it. So let's go for round two. All right, and here we go. So basically, uh, Hobgoblin. Um, we're really looking at a one cost, well, one attack creatures, and there's so many synergies with this. I really am interesting to start building with it. Um, starting with Echoing Ooze, tons of warrior cards, well, synergistic warrior cards that have one attack, and also the fact that you can give them um, charge with Warsong Commander. So quite a lot of synergy with the warrior cards. I, I was going to try to make it. So, looking forward to that. Cobalt Guardian. Yeah. Medium. Iron Sensei. Iron Sensei. Jesus. Those Iron Senseis. Well, they do work with each other. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Uh, Jeeves, again, good in aggro. Now, basically opens up the door to any class having aggro, pretty much. Uh, Bomb Lobber? Uh, you see, this is pretty interesting. So if you compare it to um, the Iron Forge Commando? Or the Stormpike Commando? Anyways, the 4-2 that can ping for 2 damage. Um, so it's 5 mana for a 4-2. It can ping for a specific 2 damage and can also ping face. This guy can actually deal 4 to random and bypass his cloak. Um, so that's actually an upside for having fought so many times cloaked minions. Uh, being able to hit that cloak is an upside. So pretty interesting against maybe a Miracle Rogue, something like that. Light of the Narrow, been there, done that. Mistress of Fame. Golden coming. Recycle. So, I kind of like this guy. Um, well, this guy. This sort of druidic thing shaping a green leaf. But um, I think the really big upside to this card is the fact that it does not trigger uh, death rattles. And compared to bouncing to hand, um, it's out of the play, it denies a draw down the road whenever he'll draw that card again. It, it's kind of like um, a few things. It's a counter spell, it's deny a draw, it's making him cast again the card. So it has multiple uses, plus it nullifies death rattle for the first time that it's played. So, yeah, like against a Sylvanas, this is pretty freaking annoying. Against a Sludge Belcher, very annoying. Basically, most cards in uh, Control Warrior will be pissed off when you play that. And speaking of Control Warrior, Crush. So, I kind of like this. So, it's what's interesting is that it's two mana more than assassinate but if you fulfill its trigger you're actually two mana less than assassinate so it really falls spot on um, and compared to other warrior cards it's quite i mean compared to like let's say um brawl of course it's targeted so you don't have that chance element and compared to Execute, you don't need necessarily to have a damaged minion. Like, he doesn't need to be damaged, and you don't necessarily need to have one. Yes, you're going to pay for it in mana compared to Execute, but one way or the other, the non-conditionality of it is very interesting. And, I mean, Warrior has a million ways to deal damage to his own minions. That's not the problem. And also, it combos with Injured Blade Master. That's not a combo, by the way. But I just found it funny that it actually combos with Injured Blade Master. Um, that you can actually play the Blade Master and play this afterwards for uh, three mana less overall. Like you, you'll be saving one mana in the whole equation. Metal Tooth Leapa. It's a pretty nice card on Golden, by the way. Looks like a Transformers. Pretty much is a Transformers when you think about it. 
I'll learn enhance so mechanical okay so I really 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 like this card oh man look at all these got wow so ton divine shield battle cry wind fury it has to explain everything because it gives you absolutely everything this guy is bonkers in aggro um, he is a win more so if you are winning this guy will push you over the top. If you're losing, well, chances are you would have lost anyways. There's like really a single card in aggro that'll make you go, haha, I'm, I'm gonna switch the battle here. But in most circumstances, this guy will be uh, an upside. Like, uh, if I consider him in Warlock, you'll be able to draw back up with taking damage with your ability power and very likely draw another creature at the very minimum. So let's say you got wiped, you have this in your hand, you're like, ah, let me draw a few cards and then I'll be able to go. Uh, furthermore, it can actually give taunt to a divine shield, which is really annoying. Give divine shield to a taunt, as much annoying, and can actually protect you. So what happens is, you'll have a few divine shields, a few taunts, and a few wind free, which is exactly what you want. Like, you want to have a taunt and someone sitting behind that taunt with wind free. This is precisely what this card does, and it does it magnificently. It, it's random, mind you, but the moment you have more than two creatures on the board, this card is worth its cost. So it's a 3 2 4 2, pretty much, and giving taunt to both sides, well, to other cards, Taunt, Wintry, or Divine Shield, is worth at least a man each. So, pretty interesting. And Illuminator. Yep, yep. In a mage secret deck. Implosion. So, um. It is dealing 2 to 4 damage, so we talked about it, and spell power works. Keep in mind also, I've seen a few people now playing Sacrificial Pack, because you have such an overload of demons at that point, that you can actually afford sacrificing a 1-1 to regain back 5 lives, and Sacrificial Pack basically kills Jaraxxus, so that's always a thing. Or even if you get stolen your own demons you can sacrificial pact it for zero gain back the five lives so it has some advantage mm. sabotage once again one of my favorite card for rogue so far because they kind of killed miracle rogue with all the nerfs so they kill miracle rogue they kill mali god now with killing gadget son um so they had to give it something back and i think sabotage does a fairly nice role of giving back rogues some teeth but i think what we'll be seeing is some mid-range rogue still remains to be seen unstable portal um yeah pretty interesting card but so unstable bleh. um i don't think it's that good of a card until we can test it out shadow boxer really awesome with Large AoE, and plus it's a mech. AoE heals, that is. Oh, Blast Mage. Call Pet. Minimum 18 beasts in the deck, otherwise you will hate yourself. Rare, rare. Little Exorcist. So, Little Exorcist. Um, there's so many death rattles right now on the in those ranks that you want to be able to play this and so let's say in a worst case scenario they don't have any uh, death rattle so it's a two three four three which is pretty bad mind you it will still um, block for you right so it's still gonna do its job of at least blocking one attack now, where it shines, of course, is if you're fighting death rattles. So chances are, if those death rattles are gnomes, uh, leopard gnomes, the the new robot gnome, it'll have two attack or three attack in worst case. So most of the time, this will hit, save you two attacks at the very least, and 
pretty much take down two minions. So the moment the opponent has death rattles, you're starting to get into business. Ogre okay, Ninja. That one? No, that one. I love it when that ninja attacks. Hmm, Purifier. So, this is a risky card. And take note that it's kind of like the uh, Dark Cultist with its casting cost 3 mana for 4-3, which is really awesome stats. And it really hates those death rattles. Like, if you've ever hated death rattles, he hates it more. But, now, this is the concern with this card, is that it will trigger the eggs. So that's a big problem because eggs are one of the things that aren't always triggerable. So sometimes I see a lot of people hating eggs so much that they're not able to to kill them and well they're afraid of it so they actually attack it right away even though the person who had the egg couldn't have killed it. Um, the upside with the card we just saw is that it can also kill the new Rubian comes out of it. So, it's not overall a really bad card. Like, for 3 mana, you can wipe most of his death rattles, wipe the egg, and then kill the egg with the 4 3. So, that part is kind of co cool. Oh, Golden. And Demon Heart. Yeah. Little bear. So cute. Little Exorcist. Yes. Gain more attack and defense. So much, so much death rattle hate. But ba bomb lobber, mistress of fame. That's a pretty cool animation. <laughs> Enhancer mechano. I like him. Spider tank. Hey, that's my second enhancer mechano. All right. Another Iron Juggernaut, but I did get a Hobgoblin. Eh, okay, I'm happy. So, okay, so King of the Beast, first of all, I have to say this is a fugly picture. I've never seen such a non regal lion. <laughs> Um, but in terms of what it is, so it's the king of the hounds. It needs to be able to play this, you, you need to be able to play this with release the hounds. If you do, it is quite good. Um, you basically need to dump at least three beasts before this is at least worth its stats. Um, if you're able to get more, then good, but you need minimum three to make it work for you. Uh, that's the problem. And if you're running behind, it's an expensive taunter. Mind you, though, there are not very many beast taunt, so that point itself is pretty good. And no, we don't like monkeys. Uh-huh, Savage Roar. Cobalt Guardian. Need. I mean, I guess in a mech deck it's okay, but it's so reliant on mechs that. Uh, Eliminator. Eliminator! Okay. I, is it just me or there's lots of repeats? One I cheat, my second one, I think? Maybe? Light of the Naru. Oh, epic. oh, Hobgoblin. Oh, no, I have. Ooh, that's a nice pack. Bouncing Blade, my second one, I think. Um, pretty cool card. Now I have friends who disagree, but I still think this has a very interesting um, role in Control Hunt. Warrior because it plays the role of killing an undamaged full health minion if it's the only one on the board. And if you've been playing your cards right, you are controlling the game. 
and then he'll drop his Alexstrasza. And since it's the only creature there, you can actually kill it for 3 mana. So it's kind of like a situational um, crush, but without the drawback of needing a damaged minion. However, the problem with this one though is that if there's multiple minions you'll lose they'll lose one randomly and of course the other problem is you can't use it if you have many minions or weaker minions so unless you have a strong minion statistically yours will survive oh siege engine hello actually siege engine doesn't work well with shield, Mel shield maiden whoa 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 rare rare golden rare um, nice. Knight of the Lyru. Bouncing Blade again. So many little exorcists. God damn. Woo. And Light of the Naru. Seriously, man. I, this is just plain weird. Okay. Alright. Let's just, um, uh, yeah. So, um, Trade Prince Gallywix, I am very interested to see him in the Rogue deck. So, he is something totally opposite to what we've seen in regular Rogue decks. He doesn't really sit... Well, I guess he does synergize a little bit with Van Cleef, because he basically draws you cards. Um... And the stats are really, really nice. Like, these are pretty much ogre stats, but they also are more resilient, and that's what you'd want with a big guy. And I mean, at the point where the opponent has 8-8s, eight um, yeah, you better have a removal anyways. And if he's eating 8-8 eight eight to the face, he's also kind of healing you for 8. So, yeah, 6 mana uh, and... Let's say he has to get removed by spells. That's pretty cool. You'll um, you'll gain the spell that the enemy is using to remove. So it's actually providing you with removal at the same time. That's pretty cool. Of course, the drawback is the coin that they give you, uh, that you give them, can be used for spells and for creatures. So once they play a spell, their spells and creatures cost one less to play. And keep in mind, if you're playing against the Miracle Rogue, which let's just say is not dead, it's dead. But let's just say it's not dead. Um, this would be pretty crazy against the Miracle Rogue. Because the Miracle... Well, I mean, no, sorry. You would be crazy to play this when the opponent is playing a Miracle Rogue as well. Because um, he'll get those coins. And those coins will have value. Uh, they'll draw him cards afterwards. And it'll be a really harsh cycle for you. Uh, Dr. Boom, so it's a golem. Yeah, no, well, it's a golem, and it gives you two boom bots, and the boom bots themselves deal one to four damage randomly to an enemy minion when they die. So, it's basically nine, nine for seven, with the upside that it's partially mechs so you get two mechs as well for triggers which is really cool and possibly random removal which is pretty cool as well uh, so there's really no downside to this guy he's just up 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 and seven is still possible to play in a late game control so that's pretty awesome really awesome pack makes up for some of those crappy packs uh, Iron Sensei yeah definitely less rare in this set I find Seems that. Oh my god. Murloc. Um, do I need to comment about this? Yeah. So, it's a cult master that lives longer for Murlocs. But it overloads you. And I, I'm so disappointed in Blizzard forcing, forcing Murlocs on Shaman. That's disappointing to me. It's a cool card. Uh, it could have been neutral. In my opinion, this could have been neutral. But the overload would have been weird. <sighs> Five mana would be unplayable in neutral. I don't know. I, 
I'm disappointed a little bit that they're forcing this. So they're kind of forcing totems and forcing murlocs on Shaman. So they're really in this awkward position. Power Mace. Right. Ooh, Dark Bomb. Vitality Totem, healing you all day long. See, Jan Jan. <gasps> yes, a steam wheel sniper. So, um, this is the most interesting hunter card I've seen because it plays away from those stupid aggro ones and plays in a really control. Like, an aggro hunter would want his ability to go face every time. Shoot the arrow mindlessly. Shoot the arrow mindlessly. Shoot the arrow mindlessly. And this guy actually makes you think about what you're doing. So, um, I've heard people can compare him to the Shadow Priest, but I find he's a lot less... Um, uh, a lot less versatile than the Shadow Priest, because the Shadow Priest... Uh, not the Shadow Priest, sorry, the... The Soul Priest? Mm, Shadow Priest, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, the, the creature in Priest that turns healing into damage. So, yes, it'll do the same thing for the ability. For the hero ability, the Priest hero ability. But it also converts... Um, spells into damage, which is a lot more versatile. Like Circle of Healing becomes a like freaking Nova of Death and like all your healing spells are actually big killing spells. Um, all the passive healing abilities become dangerous. Now this guy is really specific to your hero power. He's a lot less expensive. Um, so turn forward you can really start sniping stuff down combining this with your trades it, it's it's a nice surprise I I really like him it's a little bit thinking outside the box there should be more spells that change hero power to be honest like we didn't see him here but the the card that gives plus two plus two to all silver hand recruits it would have been interesting if he actually changed your hero power to bursting out a uh, three three instead of a 1-1. One, one. That would have been interesting. But I, I guess they're still pacing themselves. Wizard to change hero power slowly. Um, nothing new here, but Sabotage. Great new card. Goblin Sapper. Now, I'm starting to wonder where are these muster for battles? Like, I'm getting trolled by muster for battles. Like, seriously. Call pet? Yeah. We've seen it. We need 18 beasts <laughs> in a day. A master for battle. Where are you? Shield Maiden. Non-synergies with Shield Slam. Power Mace. Somewhat cool, but needs max. Mistress of Pain number 23. <laughs> and one Muster for a Battle so far. Ah, this is the guy, the Quartermaster. So, would have been cool if he actually changed your hero power to pumping out 3 3s instead of 1 1s. But, yeah, like I said, time will tell if it's a good card. I, I'm not saying that this is not better. I'm fairly certain you're able to build a board of 1 1s and abuse it. But, uh,. I, I would have found it interesting of altering hero powers. It's something we don't see enough of, in my opinion. Come on. Master. Okay. Shadow Boxer. And no muster for battle. God oh, damn it, Leroy. God damn it. Alright, well, I guess I'll have to live without an extra muster for battle. I'll probably craft one. I mean, it's just a rare. I don't understand. 
I've gotten like 10 times the same rare. Alright, so like 9 times the same rare and 1 muster for battle. I confuse. Alright, so thanks again guys. Um, once again I think I'll, um, I'll maybe do a review of the um, basic cards. So, well, the common cards uh, whenever I have a chance. And down the road, I'm still looking to make the um, a few steeple type decks. Very presumably, it'll be Druid and Pally, so my two main classes. But who knows? If there's enough requests, I might do other ones. But I'll start out with those two. Alright, thank you guys, and Rod Wolf out!